Hey everyone, Ben here, your friendly neighborhood medicine, and today we're going to be talking about the carnivore diet. But before we get started, if you're an old subscriber, you might have noticed that the background is a little different from my usual color palette, and that's because I'm using my other little lighting uh, stand for my residency interview. So for a while, it's going to look a little different. You're going to get a lot more blues and less purples. But let's get down to today's um, topic of interest. Uh, recently, a loved one of mine showed me a trending topic on YouTube and TikTok about the carnivore diet and at first i was like what is the carnivore diet because i've literally never heard of it but i can make an assumption but it, essentially it is a type of diet where all you eat is meat products and animal derived products now uh to uh in addition to that uh you kind of eliminate all sorts of processed foods you try to have as much as the natural organic substances of animal-based products as possible and that's that's the true carnivore diet and a lot of people who practice the carnivore diet will do um, a bit of intermittent fasting where they'll have one meal a day and then alternate it between other days so there's a lot of complicated um, practices within the carnivore diet I I'm not going to cover it all in this video because today I'm only going to be really talking about my opinion on it as a medical you know, provider on how, what I think of it. So if you are interested in learning more about the practices of the carnivore diet, I uh, highly recommend you uh, check it out. But today we're just going to be talking about the diet in general, my thoughts, concerns, and um, a little bit about uh, why I think it's getting popular and uh, overall uh, my opinion on it. So there is, um, like I said, with all uh, diet based videos there's always going to be a form of bias for me my bias is the fact that I'm a healthcare provider that looks at evidence-based research but also I want to emphasize that not all healthcare providers have really good education on nutrition which is a bit of a contradiction because you're like well if you're a healthcare provider you should know nutrition really well but to be honest most medical school and medical education doesn't really emphasize nutrition all that much it emphasizes treatment so um, there's not a huge emphasis on current medical education on the most robust forms of nutrition we just get kind of like a bare bones one-on-one -on -one class on it so initially when i first heard of the carnivore diet my thought was that it is basically the keto diet but on steroids because the keto diet does incorporate some fat based not animal based um, plant plant-based products but um emphasizes as low carbs as possible i myself i'm not keto but i do practice a low carb diet that's the diet i found that works best for my body and best for my health overall when i adopted a low carb diet i saw a lot of my medical labs start to normalize there's still some stuff that i need to work on but that's the one that works best for me with that statement is where I go to the emphasis of individualized nutrition. So I personally do not believe that one specific diet can be attributed to everyone and everyone will feel better, everyone will get better with one particular diet. This is why I'm also against the notion that the mediterranean diet is the best diet possible even though there's a lot of studies that do support it i think it's very very beneficial i think it, it's very nutrient dense but based on people's lived experiences how their bodies react to certain ingredients it might not be the best for everyone so i do really believe in individualized diet plans that work best for the person who's eating a certain thing something else i really want to emphasize is the fact that the carnivore diet is in a subgroup of diets called eliminating diets it's eliminating diets are when someone eliminates entire food groups from their diet um, in hopes of it having some beneficial health health you know outcomes but in my opinion for most people eliminating diets are more harmful than they are good other forms of eliminating diets include veganism and vegetarianism. Now, excluding um, religious preferences, eliminating diets as a whole makes it extremely hard for you to get the essential nutrients that you need as a human being to survive. Vegans need to supplement B12, and I'm pretty sure carnivore diets and keto diets mostly need to supplement 
fiber because fiber is mostly uh, coming from plants. So uh, for the general person, uh, eliminating diets are usually not a good idea to pursue. It's better to pursue something that's individualized, something that you tolerate well, something that's giving you health benefits. But for some people, eliminating diets give them a lot of health benefits. It helps them with their physical health. It helps them with their mental health. And that's why when we go online and we see these diets such as veganism and the carnivore diet right now trending on social media because people give their personal anecdotes of having success with these diets. Why? Because their bodies tolerate it really well. Some of them, their bodies do not tolerate it. They don't know it's not tolerating it. And over time, they'll realize that they made a terrible mistake. So the best thing to do is to understand that yes, the carnivore diet, veganism, vegetarianism all have benefits, but it all has drawbacks. With the carnivore diet, you're getting a very, very high protein rich, nutrient dense diet that has fats and uh, I want to eliminate the idea that fats are bad for you. Fats are good for you. And when you eat fats, you're more likely to absorb the fat-soluble vitamins, the fat-soluble nutrients. And um, some fats can actually help lower your bad cholesterol and bad fat values in your labs when you go see the doctor. And it can prevent heart disease. So... Overall, I think there is a basis of good things in the carnivore diet because of the high protein, because of its nutrient denseness, and because you're just eliminating all forms of processed foods, uh, which I think is the biggest detriment to most Western diets uh, for people's health. Processed foods are the number public enemy number one. So there are good things about it, but at the same time, you also have to look at the drawbacks, okay? So uh, it's very, a lot of people who practice the uh, carnivore diet eat a lot of red meat, and we know that uh, recent studies have shown red meat has an increased risk of developing colon cancer. Now, as far as how much that risk is, it can be very negligible. So you, some people will say, well, I'm willing to take the risk because, you know, everything causes cancer, which um, is kind of a loaded statement, but I, I see where they're coming from. Uh, but also uh, overconsumption of meats and not, get, not getting that fiber that you need might eventually over time in the next 20, 30 years lead to a development of a gastrointestinal issue called diverticulosis, which is bleeding from the anus because of outpouchings in the colon because of increased pressure of your poops and that's because of low fiber diet so if you are doing the carnivore diet you have to understand the risks you have to understand the supplements that you will need to take in order to continue to get the nutrients you need another huge thing is that vitamin c is a really important vitamin that we need in order to make sure that our bodies can heal quickly it is one of those vitamins that cross-links collagen and it keeps collagen from having a very, very good shape. Now, when you don't have vitamin C, your collagen fibers break easily, which means it becomes much harder for you to heal. Your gums may start bleeding, and then you may develop scurvy, which can lead to death. So in the end, instead of following a huge fad uh, that's happening right now on social media, try to think critically. Don't try to be influenced by a bunch of people telling you how successful they're switch to this diet is it's really dependent on how you tolerate it how your body tolerates it and at the end of the day food is not just something that gives us substance it also gives us something that we enjoy it gives us pleasure in our life so if you are switching to a completely new diet and you're not happy eating the foods that you are eating then maybe it's not worth it so at the end of the day most american diets are bad even mine i'm low carb it's helped me a lot but at the same time i do have constipation so i have to supplement with fiber supplements tmi i know but it's just an i it's just the uh, it's just a topic that i feel like you can never come to a universal conclusion because everyone is so different so my biggest advice is that try something new if you're willing to try, try it. See if it works. If it's not working, 
then don't keep doing it. Uh, don't follow the hive mind. For me, I realized that I needed to switch to a low carb diet when I saw that uh, eating rice two to three times a day was causing an elevation of my hemoglobin A1C levels, which leads to diabetes uh, if it keeps going up. So I was like, no, I have to completely change that. And I also really like bodybuilding and I know that I have to have a big protein rich diet for my lifestyle so that's why i've adopted a low carb high protein diet now it has its benefits it has its risks similar to a carnivore diet so do everything in moderation do what makes you happy and just know the risks involved with everything that you do and lastly prioritize your health and prioritize your happiness you don't have to follow some trend that's ha going on in the internet right now anyways i hope i i hope this video didn't confuse you any further i hope it didn't um make you feel like oh my god um you know i am i am a sheeple <laughs> i'm just kidding uh but i hope this video was helpful i hope you learned something from it and i hope that you'll take this advice and put it into everything else that you do in your life uh please follow me on instagram and twitter to keep up with my daily life and activism work and i'll see y'all in the next video this is Ben.